I truly think, you know, we're 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 kind of in the the golden age of AI, so to speak, where the the sort of proliferation of of use cases is going to be um, is going to be absolutely massive. Like even at even at scale, you know, we started in autonomous vehicles, and the first few years of the company, you know, it actually it felt like machine learning felt kind of um, I don't know if the word is lonely, but it was like autonomous vehicles were the the big use case. Everything else almost felt like you know, a, a sort of side project or, um, or something much smaller. And then fast forward to now, we see all sorts of like really exciting use cases um, in, in every single industry. So with, uh, with financial services customers like uh, Brex or PayPal or, or Square or whatnot, we see interesting use cases around trying to understand, um, build systems that move money more effectively or uh, identify um, uh, or understand transaction flows a lot better or identify fraud much better. Or we see use cases with, you know, Flexport, which is uh, sort of a global trade uh, platform and and enable just like an incredible amount of efficiency in the process of global trade, which is very important. You know, it's really important that like, you know, we're able to get uh, goods delivered from everywhere in the world. And uh, it's an incredibly manual process today. And by using machine learning, you can automate a huge number of those workflows and enable the, the, the overall economy to just get a lot more efficient or whether it's with, you know, um, a uh, whether it's with a large scale autonomous or uh, automotive company and a car company and building not only full stack autonomous vehicles but also driver assistance systems or systems that make drivers more safe, etc. So I think that like we're in this phase where there's this massive proliferation of uh, of of machine learning systems, and I think that like the the way one way I would think about it is um, you know the 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 sort of like software eats the world mindset is that you take like think about any industry and any um or any sort of like any problem in the world today and just imagine okay if you had software how could you, how could you transform that and i think that we've just seen this has been this like very long term sort of slow transformation because it turns out humans are sort of like infinitely creative and you'll take any system and we'll be able to identify, oh, you can use software in this way, or oh, you can use software in this way. And then you even sometimes you even replace existing software with new software. Like, you know, there's like law, like old enterprise systems that are replaced by like new style, um, bet, more consumer kind of uh, kind of internet platforms. And so um, and so I think there's gonna be this continual process where we're gonna look at something, we're gonna look at a problem. Let's say like um, in insurance, the process by which claims get processed. We're gonna look at a problem and we're gonna think. Okay, if you act like if you use machine learning in the right way, and not just AI in some magical sense, but actual like you know the the core fundamentals of machine learning, then you can design this process to be ten x more efficient. And we're just going to keep identifying all those problems. And and I think you you go fast forward to twenty thirty two, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to and uh, and the opportunity won't have stopped. Like we're still going to have like plenty of opportunity to 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 apply AI to these systems. I think maybe more. To, to name a few specific examples, because I think these are maybe um, some of the ones that are quote unquote cooler or more exciting right now. I think that there's um, there's a few that I think are really important. And for those of you um, with uh, who are sort of like thinking about what ideas are exciting, I think these are um, these are maybe some some areas to to think about. Um, I think first one is science. Uh, science is um, you know there, there's actually these papers about how scientific progress had has kind of been slowing actually a little bit over the past few decades. Um, and and one part of that is that like, you know, if you think about science, let's say a century ago or two centuries ago, um, you could do so many experiments um, and, and your ability to validate your ideas um, was 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 really, really exciting. And now we're at a point where like um, a lot of the cheap experiments, so to speak, have been explored. And now we have like ridiculously expensive experiments, you know, like particle accelerators are extremely, extremely expensive, or um, large scale clinical trials are very, very expensive, etc. And, and one of the really exciting use cases of AI is using AI to simulate, um, uh, effectively, basically simulate experiments um, significantly more effectively than you could in the past, and um, or they could using classical methods. And there's already a lot of examples of this in whether that's something like an alpha fold out of DeepMind, or uh, using AI applied to sort of like fusion experiments or fusion simulations. Um, but I think there's going to be a huge boon in physics, chemistry, 
biology pharmaceuticals. Um, and it's going to transform a lot of the sort of like, it's going to be this base technology that empowers a lot of, a lot of future innovation. So I think, I think that one's really critical. Um, metaverse is, is a use case is something that a lot of people are talking about these days. I think it means a lot of different things to different people. But I think if you, if you think about AR, um, or, or augmented reality, um, which is, is probably one of the, the form factors that might that probably feels most intuitive to a lot of us, which is that hey, we're just going to have sort of this this digital overlay over just our, our our natural lives. If you think about that problem, it is an incredibly complex machine learning problem, an incredibly complex um, AI problem, because fundamentally you need to understand the world and how these different objects relate to one another, and how um, I as a person can relate to those objects and and if people are walking past each other and they make a look, you need to be able to understand that kind of stuff. And so you need to have this very fine grained understanding of, of what is going on in the world around you. And, and that is a very, very challenging AI problem. But I think that it's one that, you know, um, is, is going to enable these sort of like very sci-fi like consumer experiences that I think of the future that I think we're all really, um, fundamentally really excited about. Um, and, and the last one that I'll kind of mention, just because, you know, I think, it, I think this one is really important and it's, it's somewhat controversial, but I think it's, it's an important one to talk about, is I think um, AI is applied to um, the government's problems, in particular applied to sort of national security, defense, intelligence, et cetera. And I think that we're in a very interesting period um, in the world where the, 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 the sort of like... Uh, Warfare is shifting from from sort of a previous paradigm to a significantly more digital paradigm. And now, you know, a significant number of of these sort of like skirmishes of the future are going to happen entire di entirely digitally in cyberspace or via AI systems or via purely digital um, systems. And I think it's really, really important that um, if you know if you believe in kind of democracy and you believe in the values that that the the United States represents, that the that the United States and other democratic countries, are able to um, utilize best in class technologies to not be vulnerable as a sort of long term platform shift is occurring. And so I think it's I think it is really important that we have some of the mo best and most brilliant technical minds thinking about how do we build the best in class systems for the future of the United States to enable um, the United States to be uh, as effective from a from a defense and sort of um, intelligence perspective as it has been for the past you know, call it 50 years, which has really enabled the sort of like modern era of peace. So um, I think those are some some of the areas that, that excite me the most slash I think are most important.